In the early days of 1965, rumours began to spread through a small English town. Bizarre sounds were heard on the morning of Christmas, which would be followed by a long period of odd and strange sightings. Not long after, Warminster was swarmed by UFO enthusiasts, many from the United States, who all wanted to learn about the thing. Warminster is a small town in western Wiltshire, southwest England. Located roughly two hours west of London and approximately 15 or so miles away from Stonehenge, which is a prehistoric collection of large stones that many claim has ties to religious, paranormal and even extraterrestrial phenomena. Warminster was settled by the Anglo-Saxons more than a thousand years ago, but the land had previously been used by the Romans. Prior to this, it has had a long and storied history dating back to the Iron Age. Following World War II, the town had a population just shy of 10,000, which has continued to slowly grow. Since the 1960s, however, the population has doubled, but the region remains quite quiet and unassuming, with an estimated 20,000 residents calling Warminster home. The town is just like most other English suburbs. However, if you drive into Warminster, you'll be greeted by a large stone wall, which features an interesting mural. Parts of it resemble the night sky, as well as a couple of black triangles set against a black backdrop. Next to these black triangles, which appear to be floating in the sky, are a couple of thin, bizarre looking creatures. Despite seeming like a completely normal small town, Warminster features a history of UFO sightings, which date back nearly a century, but only really took off in the 1960s, mostly because of the incidents previously mentioned on Christmas Day in 1964. These sightings have now become what Warminster is most well known for, and the town is often flocked to by enthusiasts and skeptics from around the world, who have wanted to get to the bottom of these sightings and rumours. So what is the story behind the Warminster thing? Hard sightings and sounds had been reported irregularly in Warminster, dating back to as early as the 1930s. Incidents that predate the Second World War and several decades before UFOs had become mainstream in popular culture around the world. The majority of reports stated they heard odd sounds, sounds that were reported to be stark and cracking by residents of the region. These unusual incidents were reported sporadically through the 1930s and 40s as World War II came and went. It wasn't until the latter half of the 1950s that the events in Warminster really began to escalate and attract the attention of the rest of the world. When the Warminster craze really took off in 1965, it was due in no small part to a local man named Arthur Shuttlewood. Shuttlewood worked as an editor and reporter for the local newspaper, the Warminster Journal. He had been working as a journalist for more than two decades and would eventually write a couple of books about his experiences. If there was ever a movie made about the Warminster thing, then Arthur Shuttlewood would most likely be the star character. In the first half of January 1965, Shuttleworth penned a small article that was hidden away in the middle of the Warminster Journal, titled Bell Hill Mystery Weird Noises on Christmas Morning. The article detailed a story given to Shuttlewood by a local resident housewife. The housewife in question, Marjorie Bai, had awoken up early on Christmas morning. At around 6am, she began walking along the street to a nearby church for a Christmas service and along the way, began to hear some unsettling noises in the region of Bell Hill. The noises she described were very odd, like tree branches being pulled over gravel. Although it had been a minor article in the paper, over 30 residents mailed into the newspaper their similar experiences on Christmas morning. This verified that Marjorie Bai was indeed telling the truth. Arthur Shuttlewood began compiling a dossier 
of the various reports over the next year or so. With every passing day, the office of the Warminster Journal became flooded with alleged encounters. In the weeks and months after the original newspaper article, letters continued to pour in from readers and other residents of the region. Dozens claimed to have had odd experiences of their own, many of which emanated from similar sounds. Bright and bizarre figures in the sky were beginning to appear regularly to locals and others that were drawn to the craze. Descriptions of these odd flying figures varied from metallic orbs, similar to the UFOs depicted in popular culture, to cigar-shaped crafts. Pairing up with most of these sightings were odd reports of new sounds, which varied from sonic booms to other kinds of bizarre droning or whizzing. Some witnesses described their car engines switching off after viewing one of these figures in the sky, while others reported their pets responding strangely. In particular, dogs seemed to be heavily affected by these UFOs. A handful of residents attempted to take photos of these flying objects, but many found it difficult to capture convincing photographs due to the speed of the objects and the primitive cameras of the time. Most of the sightings in Warminster happened in the region around Cradle Hill and Clee Hill, next to Salisbury Plain. Clee Hill in particular became a popular attraction for UFO enthusiasts because of its own unique history. An old Iron Age hill fort sits at the top of Clear Hill, and ancient Anglo-Saxon folklore claimed that the hill had been formed by the devil himself. Paired with the region's proximity to Stonehenge, it's easy to see why many were drawn to Clear Hill. Of course, both Cradle and Clear Hill happened to be located near a military base, which could offer up the most plausible explanation for the sightings. Some of the newspaper reports in 1965 stated the following. On June 3rd, 1965, several people reported seeing a large cigar-shaped craft in the sky. The sighting was reported by a family in Hatesbury, a town near Warminster, and their account was later verified by more than a dozen other people. On August 17th, 1965, a loud boom, similar to that of a large detonation, shook houses in the neighbourhood of Boreham Fields. Residents recalled the noise making them all collectively look outside, where one resident described a monstrous orange flame was seen in the sky, cracking and hissing. As the year wore on, the countryside was full of enthusiasts and sceptics alike, even as far afield as the United States, all who were hoping to either prove or disprove their belief in the extraterrestrial and with them came the expected procession of witnesses who described seeing a thing in the sky. As time went on, odd rumours began emerging alongside the sightings. The rumours included reports of entire flocks of pigeons being killed at once, as if they had been snuffed out in mid-air and then dropped to the ground. There were also rumours that rodents had been found in the region, having been mutilated prior to their death. According to locals, these rodents had been found with large puncture wounds that could not be explained. Roughly six months after the initial article in the Westminster Journal, the town had attracted over 10,000 short-term residents, packing the town's hotels and motels, all wanting to get a taste of the UFO craze. On the 27th of August, 1965, a town hall meeting was called in Warminster so that the residents could meet the authorities to discuss the ongoing phenomenon, which had been nicknamed The Thing by local press. The meeting was actually recorded for national coverage, since the story had been making waves across the UK and the world. How many people here tonight are afraid of The Thing? If tonight we can contribute something constructive to the explanation of these phenomena, it might be able to assure these people who have nothing to be alarmed about. The noise did occur, and I confirmed the lady who was too scared to disclose her name that she did hear it, and so did I. It woke me up. I was wakened by this dreadful droning sound. Would like to speak up? And um, I went to the bedroom window, and I saw this brilliant object. It was quite low in the sky. And I live up Beacon View, that way. And it seemed to be travelling very slowly. 
And I was petrified. I just couldn't move. I was shaking like a leaf. I just couldn't move, and I, it was going on for half an hour. Surprisingly, Arthur Shuttlewood, the editor and journalist that had almost single-handedly kicked off the area's UFO craze earlier that year, was staunchly a non-believer of the rumours plaguing the region. Shuttlewood's scepticism, however, had totally faded away by September, seven months after his original article, when he himself claimed to have had an experience of the UFOs, though he did not elaborate on his experience. The unexplained phenomenon nicknamed Warminster Thing continued to attract many curious onlookers and UFO enthusiasts over the coming months. Among them were members of BUFORA, the British UFO Research Association, who had officially launched just a couple of years prior in 1964. The total number of sightings began to wane towards the end of 1966, but the area of Warminster had embraced its reputation as Britain's top hotspot for unidentified flying objects, with shop owners beginning to sell specialised alien merchandise and one resident even opening up a UFO-themed hotel. In 2015, a conference was held in Warminster to mark the 50th anniversary of the original sightings. It had been half a century, but several UFO enthusiasts and experts were in attendance, proclaiming Warminster as a British UFO capital, making it, in essence, the UK's version of Roswell in New Mexico. A large concrete wall was given a colourful mural in the middle of Warminster itself. Artists memorialise the UFO history of the town in large sprawling work of art which pays homage to the stories that have now become local folklore. Many sceptics wonder what it is that makes the region a hotbed of UFO activity. Most factor in the nearby military base as the most likely culprit. The base, however, is a barracks that serve an army infantry base, and it is unlikely that they would be experimenting with aircraft. Nonetheless, odd sightings and weird incidents continue to occur in and around Warminster, and the town remains a place of mystery. <laughs>